this is a flip podcast. Many hours. <laughs> many, many hours. Late at night. Can't, you know, don't want to go to sleep. Just plug in at the computer. This is Antic, the Atari 8-Bit Podcast. I'm Kevin Savitz. James Burton published one program for the Atari 8-Bit Computers, Draw It, a graphics utility that was published by Atari Program Exchange. It first appeared in the summer 1983 APX catalog, where it was awarded first prize in the Personal Development category. I'll read its description from the catalog. Draw It, by James Burton, recommended for ages 8 and up, written in machine language. Turn your Atari computer into an animated easel. There are many drawing programs available for Atari home computers. Draw It stands out from the crowd because of its well-chosen, easy-to-use features and its ability to turn your creations into both a slideshow for which you control the timing and an automatic message cycling system. With Draw It and 48K of computer memory, you can create up to 9 pages of multicolored drawings in memory at a time. With 16K of memory, you can create 1 page, and with 32K of memory, you can create 5 pages. Using 4 color pens, you can choose from 16 different colors and 8 different hues. You can easily draw outlined and solid circles, lines, boxes, different size text, and freehand sketches. Draw It also has a fill feature, along with design relocation, page merging, and two zoom levels for detail work. The program comes with three quick reference pages you can load into memory, if you have the appropriate amount of minimum memory, and use for handy recall when you're working. You can store pages on either cassette or diskette and recall them at a later time. You can use your drawings in several ways. For example, Draw It includes a program that lets you incorporate your drawings into basic programs. And with Draw It's animator feature, you can use a simple set of commands to combine pages in imaginative ways, such as fading one page into another, creating page wipes from any of four directions, displaying pages in any order with your own specified time delay, and repeating any of these features. With Draw It, you can turn your Atari home computer into a visual aid for presentations or into an automatic sales or demonstration device. The diskette version of Draw It includes an animation demonstration. You'll really enjoy experimenting with this program. The author invites questions and comments by mail and telephone. Review Comments Draw It is an excellent picture drawing tool. It's easy to learn and use and has many nice bells and whistles, such as adding letters of any size, a choice of cursor form and speed, and the ability to load screens from BASIC. The animator demonstration is wonderful. The manual is well written and includes a quick reference page. Requires one Atari joystick controller. Optional Atari BASIC language cartridge. Order information. It was available on cassette and diskette. Either way, it required 16K of RAM and cost $39.95. It was APX catalog number 20209. This interview took place on August 24, 2017. See, I was an electrical engineering major at the University of Hawaii, and I had to take a, a basic class. So as soon as I took that class, I kind of said, oh, this is for me. So I, let's see, that was, I started in college in 79. So um, I think it was like my second year in college. I took that basic class and it's like, ooh, programming. So mm-hmm. um, was this like on a, on a mainframe or what sort of, of uh, where, what? Oh, yeah. Uh, you get, you get a console and actually the, did I have to do it on cards? I know at one point I had to do cards. Hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure my first class I actually had to punch cards uh, and load it into the machine, and then you get a printed paper output. So, um, but it it was something that I liked, um, and I knew that that's where I was going to go. So, I kind of started changing my major, um, but. I knew that was going to be, you know, I already had a couple of years in electrical engineering and, you know, it kind of ended up that, um, well, I, I got into the Atari, that's kind of like, I'm getting ahead of myself. I got, I got into, you know, I, I bought myself an Atari 400 um, and started playing with that. 
Um, that was like after that course and, you know, started just playing, you know, just kind of playing games at first, but then I got, uh, started playing with that basic, um, cartridge and I wrote, actually wrote draw it in basic, um, the first time. And I, I, I sent it into the Atari program exchange and they said they liked it, but it was a little slow. So I basically converted it line from line from basic to assembly. Wow. And resubmit, resubmitted it. And then uh, I think it won like a best consumer or, or third place. Or for one of the quarters, I had a, some kind of award to say, um, you know, I, I think it was first place for like consumer product or something for right. the quarter. In, uh, and, won first in the personal development category in the summer 1983 catalog. There you go. Okay. Uh, so that was kind of good. Um, and then I was, you know, because of that, I, I went up for the, the yearly prize. So I got to fly me and a friend from Hawaii to San Francisco. So that was kind of cool. Yeah. I want to so, know, all, yeah. let's talk all about that. Um, so I, <laughs> I know this was uh, January, 1984, and I know it was at uh, St. Francis hotel in San Francisco and that, uh, it was for, this was for the the third annual Atari Star Award, which was a $25,000 prize. Uh, you didn't win it. Uh, Getaway won it. But uh, apparently you and uh, our Stanley Kistler and Gregor Novak were the other finalists. Um, so, I mean, tell me, let, let, let's, yeah, tell me about that trip. I want to know everything about it. Well, at the time, I didn't have a girlfriend, so I took my friend. <laughs> and we went up there, and we just had a blast. Um, you know, we had... Uh, room service in the hotel. It was a nice hotel. Um, I think I had to buy a suit because I didn't own one. (laughs) Uh In Hawaii, you know, we're all slippers and t-shirts and stuff. Um, So that, that was, you know, being a young kid going up there, that was, that was a big, a big deal for me. Yeah. It was kind of a bummer that we didn't win, but you know, I were like renting a car and we were driving around Silicon Valley area and, you know, there's that thing where you drive and you hit the, you turn and hit the parking brake and you slide out. We tried that because it was a red car. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, and, um, and you know, we got a tour of the Atari facility. That was nice. Seeing all oh, the, neat. you know, the, the chip boards made, even like the room where they they had all the CAD drawings going on. So it was like a darkened room and they had all the big screens and they were designing the circuits. So that was pretty cool. Um, and seeing the boards made, you know, floating across, uh, you know, they didn't have the, chips pop down there that float across the solder and they would solder it up. And so, you know, the tour was cool. The hotel room was good. Um, was a little bummed out that I didn't win, you know, big chunk of money, but, uh, even that, you know, because it was selling on the program exchange, I forget what my first, uh, royalty check was, but at the time it was like, Ooh, I could live off of this. Huh. That was like the first quarter, and then the second quarter was a lot smaller, and then it was kind of like went up to nothing. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> but, you know, it, it was like, oh, you can make a living out of programming. So that that was pretty cool. Um, nice. On that trip, since we were already on the mainland, uh, we caught a bus up to um, Lake Tahoe. So we went up to Lake Tahoe, and I have a, I had an um, aunt that was up there. So we stayed in her house right on the lake, and we went up skiing. Um, you know, just two kids from Hawaii, never saw snow before. Um, strapped skis on us, didn't even take a lesson, and just pointed them downhill and had fun. And it fell down a lot, but, nice. you know, it was, it was fun. Yeah. Um, so quite memorable trip. Um, it, it was all good times back then. Nice. It kind of, you know, really opened my eyes about, you know, what programming could be. Um, and you know, I always, I just love playing on the, that Atari, you know, it, it had some neat, you know, registers on it, like the display met registers where you could point, you could change one of the registers for the display memory and just kind of point it anywhere in memory. So you, you could move it, you could change that pointer down to where your program was running and you'd see on the screen, if you're in character mode, all the, all the little registers running You'd see, you know, just characters on the screen would just be whipping mm-hmm. around. So that that was always kind of cool. You could just kind of change where that pointed, you know, up or down. And you could see, you know, the ROM cartridges. You could see how they stored their strings. They would like to turn the high bit on on the last, last character. Um, 
you know, that, I don't know. And even the, you know, switching graphic modes on the fly with the interrupts, that was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. I tried to do another, like a game. Um, and the whole premise of it was I was going to change instead of actually mapping out the, the graphics, I was actually by interrupting and changing those registers, I was going to change things on the fly. So, um, I don't know if this is getting too technical, but no, no. Uh, you know, they had the player gra- graphics, they had the player missile graphics. Sure. So by putting interrupts at a certain stand lines, you could then get control, let's say change the colors, change the positions, and you could reuse them. So I had like a, it's kind of like a, it, it, it didn't get very far, but it was like, you know, like where you see like a, a grid, a 3D grid, like someone's like walking on a, a 3D grid. So okay. you... Your, your grid kind of goes towards the horizon, you know, converges to the horizon. So you have lines going across and lines going, you know, it's like you're on a, a standing on a grid, a little high looking kind of 3D at it. So, and all of it was drawn without any, you know, putting things in memory. I was all like the horizontal lines were just turning on the color, the background color, either on or off based on an interrupt. And huh. the, the, the lines that went, you know, kind of at an angle up and down were player missile graphics that I kept moving. Um, and, you know, I, I think I, I don't know how many I use. I used a few of them and then I would load them with something, load it with just like one dot. And then I would actually change them as it went across the screen. So, uh, you know what? I kind of got a little rusty on that, but it was kind of neat because <laughs> instead of drawing things, I was actually manipulating registers on the fly to make something on the screen that I wanted. Oh, neat! So that that, that was just kind of cool. You know, you, you can't do that now with regular computers because it's all okay. Draw this thing. You know, you can't really get down to the register level, which I thought was really cool at the time. You know. Cool. So th- this game was not was it in assembly language. Assembly language, I assume. Oh, yeah, yeah, completely assembly. Yeah, it was just, you know, yeah. it was kind of more just a proof of concept, you know, actually just fussing around. You know, at, at yeah. some point, you know, I was going to maybe, you know, make a tank game or something of it. But, you know, the whole, you know, with the joystick says you move left and right or up and down, the grid lines would move. And it, it you know, kept its perspective, but it was all without drawing. And then I was going to then maybe use a player missile for a tank or something, or I, I don't know what I was going to do. But <laughs> <laughs> the, the fact that you could, you know, as it's scanning, change things on the fly to make it do what you want. That, that was just, you know, that was just kind of awesome. Oh, neat. Uh, you, you don't still have that or, or the source code for Draw It, do you? I had it at one point. Um, I, I kept it for a long time. I remember somebody was researching Atari stuff, and I believe I sent it to them. But I huh. can't remember who it was. Um, like there were, someone called to say, um, or maybe I offered it. Someone called to say, you know, they they got they're going through all the old authors and asking permission if the ROMs could be used. Right, or that was me. Or that was that was in two thousand, oh. believe it or not. But I don't okay. believe I don't believe you sent me any discs at that time. Anyway, if you have them, okay. I I would love to uh, recover them and uh, get that okay. date off there. If yeah, I remember I printed out all the. Actually, you know what? I I probably have the. When I submitted it, I printed out, I, I printed out the the program, and then I mailed it, uh, registered to myself, just to make sure no one, you know, it was kind of scary set, submitting it, you know, it's like, ooh, what if they steal it? So I wanted to have proof right. that I wrote it. So mm-hmm. I, I think I printed stuff out, put it in a sealed envelope, and then registered, mailed it to myself. I might still have that. Oh, cool. Well, that's better so, than nothing. Sure, we can we can yeah. uh, re, reconstitute it from the printout. Awesome. Yeah, we call that the uh, the poor man's copyright. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, well, cool. Uh, so you, I want to go back to a Sunday language. They they asked you to. They said it wasn't fast enough, so you did it in a Sunday language, and you said that like it's no big deal. But to a lot of people, that was a big deal. Did you already know assembly, or did you learn it specifically for that project? No, I learned it for that project. I mean, it it kind of makes sense. You know, it's. It's just a lot low level, you know, but yeah. you can do anything you want. So, um, did you do it in the Atari assembler assembler editor card? Yep. And I remember, you know, originally I was writing it on a 400, and 
uh, you know, I was saving to tape, <laughs> which is always <laughs> scary. <laughs> um, and I remember, you know, they had a, a, a store down here and, you know, they had a Atari uh, club meeting on Wednesdays and they had a little like lab upstairs and you could use, you know, and you could kind of use their computer just, you know, if no one was using it or whatever, you could go up and do it. And, you know, the fact that they had a, you know, 90 K floppy was like, Ooh, you know, how could you ever fill this thing up? So <laughs> that was a lot nicer, you know, actually having a floppy disc and, you know, not always have to worry about, you know, your tape messing up because I always kept like lots of backups because, hmm. you know, if you're sure, if your cassette tape kind of screwed up or messed up, there goes your whole program. So, yeah. Cool. So, yeah. When, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. So when you won the first prize in the personal development category, I know you didn't win the big the big twenty five thousand dollars, but did you get a? Uh, did they give you a coupon to just get some some hardware? Yeah, I got a twelve hundred XL. Like I can, it, 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 it's that. It looks like a big keyboard. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, I'm not sure if my memory is good on that. Um, yeah, I got one of those. Did I get a hard drive with that? Um, I can't remember if, if I remember I got the the, the XL. I, I was kind of jazzed about that. Um, uh, but I don't think I, you know, I never really did much programming, you know, except for that that one player graphic thing. Um, this other guy who was in the club wanted to do a word processor, and we kind of collaborated for a while, but that kind of went nowhere. Um, I think at that time I was kind of going more into school and, you know, working on school projects. And then eventually, um, I got a job with this one partner, uh, we're writing computer software for concrete pumping companies. So, um, we started doing that. Was that uh, on an Atari or on a bigger computer? No, it was on a, a PCs. Uh-huh. I think he had, well, he had a, oh, what was it? It was one of those suitcase computers, I think Osborne or something. Or, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, I was programming on that, I think, uh, oh, what was it called? D-Base 2 or something like that. <laughs> um, and we, we kept doing that. You know, it was just like printing their invoices so they could enter bills. Um, and then the company moved to the mainland, uh, so and they asked if I wanted to come to finish it, so I went up there. So I kind of dropped out of college and started doing that and I did that for a bunch of years Uh, I kind of got tired of you know we were kind of successful not successful it was just me and this one guy and we lived um, we we had enough money to pay rent and buy food and I I think I had a $500 a week salary Um, but I kind of got tired of you know just living off a suitcase just wanted to have a 9 to 5 job so then I went back to my uh, school and got my computer science degree hmm. and then what got a regular nine to five job in San Diego. So that, that was kind of cool. So, I mean, the Atari was, you know, piqued my interest. Well, I mean, that, that school, that first basic class piqued my interest and I knew right away that programming was what I wanted to do. Um, the Atari was a way to do it at home. And then, you know, kind of had that job, got some work experience on the real world, writing programs. And they went back to college and college was kind of a, a breeze after that because, <laughs> you know, when you write business software and, you know, you have to figure things out, you know, you kind of learn how to do stuff in the trenches. So going back was kind of like easy. Um, and I got my degree and then just started C programming since. And I've been a programmer since. Getting kind of old now, but, you know, still still can do it. <laughs> <laughs> so are you still in, in programming today? What do you do today? Yeah, I work for um, a small company. We actually, it was a bigger company before. I've been with that company for like 25 years. Uh, we do document imaging. And then they recently kind of broke off half the company, and now that's called Innovate. So we're pretty new on that. But yeah, we do mainly C uh, and then a bunch of Java. So we do like our own scanning software, document imaging, storage, um, retrieval, cutting CDs, that kind of stuff. Cool. Nice. Um, so getting back to draw it, I uh, follow up question. Oh, 
Why did you make draw? Did you have a need for a drawing program, or did you see that there was a space that needed to be filled, or I mean, why? Why? I don't know. I wanted to, you know, you, you start playing with the computer, and you know, you get the joystick input, and you want to have something happen on the screen, and then you just start, you know, it just kind of like okay, and then just kept going from there, you know, it just kept adding features. Um, you know, if you, you put up the graphic thing and as you, you put a dot there, you make it blink. And then as you move your joystick, you make it move and draw and leave crap. You know, it, it just kind of progressed. And even like drawing circles, I didn't know how to draw circles. Um, and there was no circle drawing routine. So I just, I kind of figured it out myself. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, to make it fast, and I didn't use signs or cosines because I thought that was going to be too slow. So I kind of, it kind of was a vector. I think I had a vector going up with a one and then I, I, I forget. Then as I moved, you know, where it was from the origin that became what I, what I changed the vector. It was kind of a weird thing as I remember, but it was just all multiplication, no, no signs or cosines. And since I calculated for one quadrant, I actually, you know, as I drew it, I actually took advantage of, you know, drawing the one that was right below it and the one that's at, you know, like if you start at 3 o'clock and you go to uh, 259 on the clock, then you might as well do the 301 and the 601 and the sure. the 559. You know, so if you already calculated where that dot's going to be. So when it drew the circle, it didn't draw it like going around. It basically kind of, you know, went from the the three and 12 and six o'clock in nine o'clock positions and then grew out from there to it. It came to <laughs> connect huh. it up and it, mm-hmm. it looked like a circle, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, back then even multiplication, I, um, it didn't have a GPU, so it was all done in software. So the floating points were kind of slow. So anything you could do in integer math was good. So I think all that, I think all that was integer math. So, but, you know, just trying to figure that out, it was like, oh, okay. And even a drawing, I think the line drawing, they had the line drawing routines in there, so you could go from point to point. And kind of, you know, look at that the way they step. You know, it's all integer math, no float. It, it was kind of like that for the, the circle. So, it, you know, it's just always like a little challenge, and, you know, you, you, you kind of sit there with paper, and you figure it out, and that's what I like about it, you know. So, I don't cool. know. Awesome. So, you know, they, it's not like I needed a program to draw. <laughs> right. I'm not an artist, but it was more just fiddling around and, you know, something starts, you start doing something and, you know, just keep adding features. You know, oh, I want to put text. Oh, I want to do a fill. How do I do that? You know, you know, start coding it. I think it was recursive. I hope it was recursive. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. then, cool. Okay. And then after Atari Program Exchange went away, it looks like you also published the program through Antic, through their software sales arm. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of, to me, that those were the same in my mind, but I guess, yeah, if you tell me they're different, Antic sounds right. Okay. <laughs> and that, that's where I was getting my, uh, yeah, the royalty check, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I saw a stub from that, one of those somewhere, <laughs> nice. along with all the other papers. <laughs> So I know, uh, it'd be interesting to look back to see how much it was because I remember at the time it, it might have been a thousand something bucks or something or seven hundred bucks or something, but at the time it was like ooh, you know, yeah, it 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 seemed like good money. Maybe it was a couple thousand or maybe I, I don't know. It was it was enough that it was like ooh, <laughs> you know, this 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 could be something, but it it, it tickered, you know, it trailed off really quick. Right. So it was good money once, and, <laughs> and then <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the first royalty check was neat. After that, it was like, oh, okay, you know, 80 bucks here, two bucks here. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, it sounds like so it did, might have been... Did you write... Sorry, go ahead. Did you write any uh, software yourself or... Uh, nothing that was published. I wrote some little little games and little utilities just for my own use that maybe got sent out to BBSs and things, but nothing much more than that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember um, I had this friend who was part of the club. Um, and he made a thing called ghost cart. I don't know. Okay. I don't know if that he just did it locally. Basically it was a little circuit that you could drop in to the ROM slot 
and it would turn on a bit to make the RAM look like ROM. So it would basically make it, um, you, so you could load something in RAM and then this thing would, you, I don't know if you had to press, I think you had to press a button on it and then it would turn a certain bit on in memory such that the, the RAM looked like ROM. And it was so you could copy ROM cartridges because one of the things the copy protection they would do is they would go and the program would actually try to wipe itself out. And if it was a ROM cartridge, then it wouldn't happen. So he, he, he just made a physical circuit board that would, you know, mimic a ROM, make the RAM look like ROM. Huh. And, it, and he, you know, he would actually draw his own circuit boards, you know, etch them by, you know, sticking the, the negative over it and sticking out in the sun. And, you know, it was a real, real like cottage, in, you know, industry thing. Yeah. And, he, and I remember he also made a, um, a taxi program and he actually drove a taxi and he used his Atari with his little, you know, uh, you know, I think he, did he, I think he just had Atari, but he had a display on there and, you know, he had to do his, I think the way he did multiplication is he just added, added, he just put it in a loop and just added <laughs> again, <laughs> again and again, <laughs> you know, no, no shifting, no nothing, just yeah. add. Huh. But, you know, it was fast enough that, you know, if you're just, you know, trying to make, count, figure out the fare, you know, it's like, oh, I got to add a 35 cents, or I got to add 35 cents, or, you know, multiply, but it was just basically adding. Huh. So, you know, cool. a lot of neat little primitive things, you know, down at the circuit and register level, that, that's kind of what was neat about the Atari. Are you still in contact with that guy? No. Huh. All right. Can't remember. I know he lived down by Diamond Head. Um, oh, and he probably wouldn't want people to know who he is. <laughs> 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 you know, this was back before emulators and you know sure. taking ROM cartridges and making them run. Right. I guess they still have that issue if you load it in RAM and you get an emulator and try to. I guess they emulate a ROM cartridge now. So yeah, they, they, limit, they right? can do that. So. Some of the emulators are pretty darn impressive. Uh, yeah. With built-in debuggers and all sorts of cool things. So, so what haven't I asked you about the Atari days that I should have? Many hours. <laughs> you know, <laughs> many, many hours, late at night, can't, you know, don't want to go to sleep. Just plugging at the computer, you know. My parents let me go, you know. Yeah. It wasn't just, you know, I, I didn't <laughs> play that many games. It was just always coding, always playing with it always poking at things, you know, reading the specs on, you know, the CPU and, you know, especially all the, the registers and playing with every single register on there, you know, every player missile, the collision graphic, you know, collision detection, everything. And just, you know, reading every little spec and, you know, ending and ordering and shifting things around. It was just real, real down to the metal. That, that's what I liked about it. And, you know, for a tinkerer, it's, it was a great little thing, you know. You don't, you don't have too many things nowadays that are, you know, down, down at that level. You know, everything is, you know, languages and biases above it. And, then, you know, you don't, you don't mess too, too down deep or you'll be, you know, people will change the underneath too quickly. So you can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... Those were the days. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, they were. Yep. Cool. Well, thank you so much. This is exactly what I needed. Okay. Well, thanks for uh, kind of keeping it alive, you know. Those <laughs> old programmers, you know. Those were the, the fun old glory days, and it's kind of nice to, you know, but the people took the time to make the emulators and put the old cartridges up, you know. It just makes it so you can kind of go back and play with it. He's like, oh, I remember that. If you enjoy these interviews and would like to contribute, there are two ways you can help. You can help fund these interviews directly by contributing to my Patreon. A small monthly contribution will help offset the expenses of making these oral history interviews. Contribute at patreon.com slash savits. 
or make a tax-deductible contribution to the Internet Archive, a nonprofit digital library that has done incredible things to preserve computer history. Make your tax-deductible contribution at archive.org/donate. Thanks.